key thing is, I would love to talk to little Nas X because God loves him yes. and cares about him. Um, and you never want to come across like it's all just God's holiness and people are just terrible. This is a world that God, that Jesus died for, and we want to engage in that world in a loving way, but we have to prepare people in our homes and in the church to live differently. I think if we, if we sat down with uh, little Nas X's father or Kanye West, who's really kind of created his own church, we're going to find out that they've got really defective churches, that the churches that they're a part of are not really discipling people to be true followers of Jesus. Because in a true church, a biblical church, they're going to be accountable and they're going to be disciplined for this kind of outrageous behavior. Hey, you guys. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's similar to cooking. At one stage of a child's life, okay, you can't use anything but the microwave because you don't know how to handle the stove or the oven. As they mature, then you're able to let them, hey, you can cook in the oven. As they mature, you can cook on the stove, but be careful with this, that, and the other. So the same thing with my kids. As they grow and mature, yes, right now you have no discernment. You would take whatever anybody gives you. So I can't give you all the music. I can't give it to you. But as I'm teaching you in the word, I'm discipling you how to follow Jesus. Yep. As they mature, they will learn. I can listen, but I don't need to listen to that because that's counter. They'll begin to discern as they grow. That's that's my response to those who say, oh, when they get out, I'm not going to keep them. At, you can't listen to this forever because at some point they're going to be adults. And hopefully in the transition of my rearing them, they will go from listening to my voice as I listen to God to then listening to God's voice for the rest of their life. We got to end on this note, but I, I want you guys to or we may only have time for one. But, Bobby, you referenced Sodom and Gomorrah. And there are me, friends, family. We, we have conversations all the time I'm like, man, I, I think we're in Sodom and Gomorrah. I think the united Sodom and Gomorrah is what we what we are right now. I like how you said that we got just a few minutes left. Yeah. But I want to throw this bomb <laughs> in your lap. <laughs> are are we living? Are we Sodom and Gomorrah? In some ways, that is true, but in other ways, it's not true. So it's a longer conversation. Uh, the thing that I want to uh, take you up on, though, is we should be concerned about God's judgment coming on this nation. I think you're right about that. It's not just the homosexuality thing. You, you're talking about uh, spending and gossip and slander, the breakdown of marriage, the hatred that people are uh, is being engendered and all these things we've just we're turning our backs on God and I do think we should be concerned you cannot build a society on ungodly behavior and uh, expect things to go well long term we saw them in Gomorrah Anthony very quick I would just say not exactly Sodom and Gomorrah there were none who were seeking after God at least here we have some got a couple of guys here in our churches we're seeking after it, God. What he's talking about is before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah right. in Genesis 19, Abraham argued with God mm -hmm. and Abraham said, look, if you find 50 there, will you not destroy it? God said, okay. If you find 45, will you not destroy it? God said, okay. And he said, oh Lord, if you find 40, God said, okay. If you find 30, if you find 20. And finally he said, if you find 10 godly people, will you not destroy it? And God said, I won't. But then it was destroyed because it was only Lot and his two daughters. <laughs> that may be me and my Amish wife. <laughs> A few years now, we'll be the only two. <laughs> I hope. <laughs>